can you really think yourself into having a better brain? Are you like the thousands of other adults that I talk to who catch themselves wishing they had a mental fountain of youth, longing for the days when their brain felt sharp and energetic, ready to conquer the world? Maybe you feel like you've hit a dead end with your memory. What if I told you that not only can you get yourself back to feeling like you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s, but you can do it all by thinking differently? In today's 10-Minute Memory Hack, we're going to talk about how we can think ourselves into a better memory by stoking our inner neural fire with something we all need a little bit more of positivity. I'm Julia Lundstrom, a neuroscience and brain health educator, as well as the CEO of Simple Smart Science. Subscribe now to get our 10-minute memory hacks every single week. Today, we start on a journey that will help you tap into your brain's ultimate potential and rewire your brain. You see, our brains are like intricate webs of neural connections, constantly firing, rewiring, to process information and to form memories and guide our thoughts and actions. And guess what? The way we think has a direct impact on how these neural pathways are formed. Numerous studies have shown just how major of an influence positive thinking can have on our brain's plasticity or its ability to expand or shrink. It's constantly learning how to adapt, change, and reorganize itself throughout our lives. Think of neuroplasticity as a mental renovation project where you're tearing down old cobweb-covered neural pathways and creating shiny new ones. And guess what? Positive thinking is like the architect in charge. In a study published in the journal Psychological Science, researchers from UC Berkeley discovered that individuals who practiced positive thinking experienced a significant increase in brain plasticity compared to those who focused on your negative thoughts. This positive outlook not only enhanced cognitive flexibility, but also contributed to improved memory and overall brain health. All the links to our studies are in the descriptions below. Now, I know what you may be thinking, that improving your memory should be more complex than just thinking positively. And I'm here to tell you that this couldn't be further from the truth. Let's consider our brain as a garden for a moment. Just as you go out to prune dead leaves off of your hedges and bushes to make room for new growth, your brain does a similar dance with its neural connections. When we prioritize positive thinking, it works wonders in our brain by helping to strengthen the connections linked to optimism, resilience, and problem solving, all while weakening those tied to negativity and stress at the same time. Seems like a no-brainer, right? But here's the real kicker and where you have to put in a little work. Positive thinking doesn't just stop at thinking about the good things in life and putting positive spins on everything, you know, the silver lining. It also means trimming away the negative. And this is where a lot of us end up getting stuck. Think of this truly as a science of actively encouraging the growth of fresh, exciting pathways through positivity and pruning away the debris of negativity. Thinking positively comes to many of us very easily, but not everybody. But we could all use some help with pruning away the negativity, or as I like to call it, mental clutter. So let's explore four simple ways to both plant these seeds of positivity and clear out any uncluttered mental landscape, and you'll quickly see how your brain will blossom into its full potential. First, there's gratitude and journaling. In the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, it's so easy to overlook the small wonders that surround us. Imagine waking up each morning like it's the first morning of your new life, your 2.0 version. You wake up with this zest for life. You reflect on all that you've been able to experience, and you look forward to all that you will experience. Gratitude journaling is your key to unlocking this magical perspective. It's your gentle reminder to just pause and reflect and savor those mundane moments in life. When you take a pen to paper and reflect on important things in your life, you're igniting these reactions in your brain to release important neurochemicals like dopamine and serotonin, which are both often referred to as the brain's feel-good neurotransmitters. 
Research done by Emmons and McCullo explored the effects of gratitude journaling on well-being. They found that when we engage in regular gratitude journaling, we experience higher levels of optimism, positive effect, and overall life satisfaction. To start gratitude journaling, begin by starting each day by writing down three things that you're grateful for. It can be as simple as that, but I encourage you to go deeper each day and try not to repeat yourself. You might find it to become more challenging as the days go on, but that's the point. The point is to start finding gratitude once the obvious things have already been accounted for. It's important that you're in a good headspace for this practice, though, which leads me into my second tip for you, which is mindfulness meditation. It's not a shocker to any of us that we live in a world where everything is controlled by a screen and notifications pinging us constantly and the demands of life tugging at our attention nonstop during the day. And finding moments of stillness can sometimes feel like a distant dream. But it doesn't have to be like this, and it shouldn't be. By dedicating just a few minutes each day to a practice of mindfulness through meditation, you're not only gifting your brain some presence and awareness, but more scientifically speaking, you're growing your brain. In a study investigating the effects of mindfulness meditation on brain structure, researchers found that when the study subjects took part in an eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction program through meditation, MRI scans showed increased gray matter density in regions of the brain associated with learning and memory and emotional regulation and perspective. This is huge because these structural changes were related to improved emotional well-being and cognitive functions. It's an act of bringing yourself back to the present moment, but it's also one of the most powerful forms of self-care. Speaking of self-care, let's talk about our third tip, positive affirmations. Imagine if each morning, as you looked into that mirror, your reflection back to you whispered all the words you've ever needed to hear. Positive affirmations are statements or phrases that are chosen to create a more positive mindset and improve your mental well-being. They're typically used as a tool to challenge and overcome self-sabotaging and negative thoughts. Repeatedly focusing on affirmations can counteract your negative thought patterns, leading to much decreased stress levels and a better self-image. Think of them like little love notes to your brain, affirming your strength and resilience and potential. It's important that when you're creating your affirmation, that you phrase them as if the statement's already true, to reinforce this sense of reality. I am worthy of love and respect from both others and myself. I'm in control of my thoughts, and I choose positivity. I'm grateful for the abundance in my life, and I attract positivity. It's important that you repeat it to yourself often to prune away the neural connections that reinforce this not being true and then build on the connections that do reinforce its new truth. At last, but certainly not least, we have staying social. We are inherently social beings and we are wired to thrive in the company of others. Being and staying social is more than just casual interactions. When you surround yourself with positive and supportive people in your life, you're nourishing the very essence of your brain's well-being. Imagine if you have a bowl of fresh, ripe fruits on your kitchen counter. Each fruit represents a relationship in your life. Just like fresh fruits nourish your body, healthy relationships contribute positively to your emotional and mental well-being. These relationships will uplift you and support your growth and bring out the best in you. However, consider what happens when a piece of fruit in the bowl starts to rot and mold. If left, that moldy fruit can spread to the other fruits. This is exactly how a toxic or unhealthy relationship can spread negativity and stress and emotional distress to lots of other areas of your life. We truly become the products of the people that we surround ourselves with the most. You have to ask yourself, are you going to add mold or remove mold on a daily basis? Assuming you all choose to remove it, which I hope you do, you're creating the perfect breeding grounds for oxytocin, which is your bonding hormone. Oxytocin isn't just responsible for nourishing bonds. It's a catalyst for happiness and stress relief. And it can be the key to keeping your brain protected against neurodegeneration. Oxytocin receptors are found in the brain regions related to learning 
and memory like the hippocampus. Studies suggest that oxytocin may play a role in enhancing the consolidation of social and emotional memories and in the encoding and retrieval of these memories. So whether you start off with gratitude journaling, mindfulness meditation, positive affirmations, or social connections, or any combination of the four, by incorporating these practices into your daily life, as you continue on this journey, know that every challenge is an opportunity for growth. Instead of fearing obstacles, view them as chances to flex your mental muscles and emerge even stronger. How do you practice cultivating positivity in your life? Give me a comment below, then go ahead and like and subscribe now to see a new 10-minute memory hack every single week. Thank you.